Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have an older car and the problem we have with, the, with this Chevy is that there's the, the brake lights are not working. The third light in the back window works, the other two lights left and right side do not work. Or I should say intermittently will not work. I checked it uh, yesterday and I was not going to film this, but I decided to bring you along and show you. I already have the lower part of the dashboard down, trying to isolate where the problem is. But like I said, it's an intermittent failure. And as you know, intermittent failures can be a real pain in the rear end to find. Uh, I, first thing I do, thought is we check the rear brake light uh, bulbs to make sure that they were okay. We check them with our power probe, only to find out that we had no power back to the brake lights on the left and right side. Like I said, the back window it is power um, to, the, uh, to the third light in the back window. Um, so what I did is I went underneath the dashboard to check the brake light switch. As you know, the brake light switch is basically an off and on switch. When you step on the pedal, it completes the circuit, sends power to the, uh, to the back of the vehicle and lights up the, the brake lights. We have power um, to the switch and when we apply the brake pedal uh, it itself, it does complete the circuit and power does exit the switch going back to the, to the back of the vehicle. The problem is, is that the, uh, the power doesn't just go from that switch right back to the back of the, uh, of the brake lights. It actually has to go through a bunch of other switches uh, underneath the dashboard, which I'll bring you in the back and I'll show you on the wiring diagram where the problem is. Luckily, when I was checking it yesterday, I was able to isolate where the problem was. Um, like I said, intermittently the brake light would work. Sometimes it was on, sometimes it wasn't on. Uh, I'm just saying, it, it is intermittent. The problem is there and sometimes it is, sometimes it isn't. Right now, the problem is there. We have, the, I'm gonna bring you, I'll show you too. The third light is on, the two brake lights on the, on the left and right side are not on. I looked on the wiring schematic to find out where everything runs through. Um, and, and, and it pretty much runs through the, uh, the headlight switch, the uh, turn signal switch, up, right up into the wiper switch itself. Uh, so everything leads to either in the dashboard or up inside the steering column. Um, like I said, it is intermittent, so it is a pain in the rear end. The other day I was underneath there checking power and ground on the brake light switch, and I turned around and looked, and now the brake lights are on, and I couldn't duplicate the problem. Um, this morning I came in to try to, to go a little further into it, and I do see that the, uh, that the brakes, uh, that now the circuit is not completed. So I'm being very careful not to touch the wiring down the bottom until I can isolate where the, the issue is. Uh, but let me show you what's going on with it. Okay, that is the, uh, the issue. We have power to the uh, third light and we have nothing to the, uh, to the brake lights themselves. So what I did do, I'm going to bring you in here, I'll show you. You can see that's my, uh, my assistant right there to keep the brake applied. So what I did is I came up underneath here to the brake light switch itself, which you can see is right here. And if you check right here, power and ground, you'll see there's power coming in and there's power coming out. So let me just get the power probe and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so now... You can see we have the brake pedal depressed. Let's get some more light up underneath here. And let me try to get in here so I can show you. We have power coming in. And we also have power coming out. So now we need to follow these wires here to find out where they actually run to. Uh, when I looked on the computer in the back, which I'll bring you in there and show you, um, everything does lead up into uh, the steering column and then up into the dashboard. So let me just show you what that looks like. Now, you're probably wondering why this is disconnected. That's for the airbag. I disconnected that uh, yesterday in anticipation of uh, playing around down here. So let me show you the schematic on the, uh, on the computer. Okay, so this is our wiring schematic. And as you can see, there's our stoplight switch. You can see where it comes down. It runs over to a, uh, to a module, or actually two different modules. And then it turns and comes over here, and it goes into the uh, to the turn signal switch itself. So um, that's where we're going to actually get in here, and we're going to check uh, our powers and grounds through the uh, turn signal switch itself. 
but when I was coming in here yesterday to go back to check this, I just want to show you what I found on the vehicle, which kind of stopped me in my tracks. Okay, now yesterday when I was in here and I was kind of come up underneath to this switch right up underneath here and check my powers and grounds in here, I came to the headlight switch itself, uh, I should say to the turn signal switch itself, and I just turned this switch here, and I just want to show you what leads me to believe that that switch is an issue. Now you see that mirror over there? You see the mirror? You can see the brake light in the back there? See that? I just want to show you what I'm doing here so you have an idea. What I'm doing basically is just touching this switch right here. Just touching this switch and when I'm touching that switch you can see the lights are blinking inside here. So I know something is going on in this turn signal switch here. So right at this point here, we're going we're gonna to stop what we're doing. And uh, I just want to back up a little bit. Yesterday when I was down in here playing around with this to get in here to gain access to that screw right there and remove right up underneath there so I can get in here and test powers and grounds. And as soon as I moved this harness right here, I looked in the back and the lights were actually on. So I could duplicate the problem by just moving these wires right here. So either we're going to have a broken wire up inside here or we're going to have a problem with the switch itself. So at this point, we're going to stop what we're doing. I ordered the stoplights, uh, a turn signal switch because I have a feeling it's going to be no good. They're going to bring it to me. But in the meantime, we're going to take this apart and we're going to come up inside the steering column and we'll find out what's going on in there. That's when I decided to bring you along. All right, first thing we're going to do now is we're going to we're going to disc we had as I said we disconnected the airbag right here so now we have the airbag is is not energized any longer and we're going to disconnect the uh, uh, the uh, airbag and take the steering okay, wheel. So now we're just going to remove the airbag itself. Now if if you if you're if you're taking the airbag off you want to make sure that this is always 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 disconnected for at least five to ten minutes so that you don't have any problem with the airbag prematurely popping. All right, now to take the, ba the airbag out, I don't know if you can see it, but right up underneath here, let's see if you can get your light up there. Right up underneath here, there's a screw inside there. And there's another one underneath here, which we're gonna get to once we turn the steering wheel. We're gonna take those two screws out and we're gonna remove the airbag. So, uh, all right, let's get set up and uh, we'll continue. Okay, and now like I said, we're going to take out those two screws underneath the bottom right here. They are Torx. Okay, we take the airbag up and out. And then underneath the bottom, I'll show you real quick. Underneath the bottom right here, there's a little clip inside there that needs to be removed. It's usually held in with a lock clip, so you pull the lock clip out first. Just like that. And then we depress this down here. Lock clip has to be up all the way. We'll take that clip out. And now we can depress this little piece here down and we can unplug the airbag and we'll just take this and put this off to the side for now. Now we're going to take out this nut right here and we're going to take out this little clip here. You just take it and you push it in, turn it and you pull it out and it comes right out just like that. All right the reason we did that is we don't want to break anything down underneath there. We're going to take out this wire from its lock, from its uh, retainer and we're just going to leave it just like that for now. Now remember, this is in the down position. What I always do here 
is I always mark where the steering wheel comes off and where it's got to go back on. Because as you can see, the wheel is not straight here because I needed to get into these bolts underneath the bottom here. Now either you can straighten it out so it's straight, or you can do like I do and just mark it right here with a marker and make sure you put it back on the same way. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a, a wrench, right, a socket right now, and we're going to take that bolt out right there. So uh, let me get a socket and we'll come right back. Okay, so we're going to take our marker. There's a little tiny notch, you can't see it, but there's a tiny notch in the top of the steering shaft right here. We're just going to mark it so that we put it back on the exact same way, like that. All right, now we're going to take out that nut right there. Now the steering wheel is locked because it's in its locked position, so it should come out pretty easily. Now we may need a puller to get this off, but we'll see how it goes. We're going to need a steering wheel puller to get this off. Now I just want to show you that sometimes you can rock the wheel and get it to pop off, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, not going to happen on this one. I used to do a lot of steering column repairs years ago, and a lot of times you could rock the wheel like that and get that to pop out, but that's not the case here. So we're going to leave that nut on right now. Let's grab my steering wheel puller, and we'll continue. Okay, now let's set up our steering wheel puller. And the way you do that is you just take your bolts, screw them in. You're going to catch them both in here, just like that. And now we'll snug it down just a little bit. Doesn't have to be real tight. You want to just snug it in there. Most of the time these steering wheels come off pretty easily. Alright, so now we're going to take our puller, and we're going to install our puller. I'll get it set up and then I'll bring you in there closer, show you how it works. just like that and now what we're going to do is these bolts here are pulling the steering wheel up and the center piece here is pushing it and holding it down so now we'll just turn it comes right off and we'll take our pieces back off before we take it out because we have to take that bolt out or the nut, I should say. Take the puller off. We'll get this out of here. Now, like I said, without that puller, it is a pain in the rear end, but you can grab the wheel and just pull hard up on it, make sure you have that nut on there, and rock it back and forth. And you can get them out, it's just a real pain in the rear end sometimes. All right, we'll take our nut off like this, put this off to the side, and then our steering wheel just comes right off. Snake our airbag wire through, like that. We'll put this to the side for now. And now in here, I don't know if you can see it, let's bring you in there, I'll show you. Down inside here, there's a little tiny snap ring right there. We're going to grab our snap ring pliers and we're going to take that snap ring out and that'll give us access to the switch which is underneath the bottom. Now, remember where everything is going here, all right? So you don't have an issue. And that, when this comes out, do not rotate the outer ring. Don't rotate it because you don't want to damage the uh, clock spring inside here. All right, so let me grab the, uh, the snap ring pliers and we'll take that off. Okay, now I will tell you that there's lots of different snap ring pliers out there. You'll have some that are angled, some that are slight angle, some that are straight. Whatever one works for you is going to be um, something that's not going to damage it or break anything while you're in here. 
All right, so we're just going to turn this up a little bit so we can gain access to it pretty easily. I will warn you with these these um, snap rings here, you got to be careful. You don't want this snap ring to go flying across the room, and uh, then you'll then you're really screwed because you'll never find it. All right, so uh, make sure you're careful when you take it out. Have patience with it. Like I said, you don't want to break it and you don't want to lose it. All right. Now we just take this off just like this. Okay, now if you're going to remember where this goes, that's great. If you're not sure, put a little spot, a little mark so that you know where it's going to go. And now we're just going to take this and we're just going to lift it up very little, just like this. And then this is the lock ring that we need to take off to gain access to that switch below. So we're not going to do anything more with the ABS sensor. We're just going to leave it there. But let me get my uh, steering wheel lock puller. And we need to take out. You see that little ring down in there, that little metal ring? We need to take that little metal ring out. So let me get my steering wheel uh, depressor and we'll do that. Okay, so now, um, that's, this little clip underneath here is sometimes a little tight to get to, but um, we're just going to take off this little washer. We're going to remember that that washer went back on underneath the clock spring, okay? And we take the, uh, the depressing tool, put it over the top like this, screw it on. Now, without this tool, it is a little hard to, to do anything, so you're probably going to need it. I mean, you, 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 if you're really strong, you may be able to push it, but I doubt it. All right, now we're just going to turn that down a little bit, just to uh, give us a little bit of a, a push on the lock ring here. for glasses. Now that, that little clip down there is a little tight so we're going to try to get in here with a little tiny screwdriver to just get underneath it and just to get it to move. Now you want to be careful you don't break anything while you're in here of course. So I'm going to get this to move first and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to explain to you how I did it. So what I did is this. So what I did is this. You see this lock ring right here. That lock ring right there, we need to, to hold that, because that's a snap ring. It just spins around in a groove down here. So what I did is I actually held it with a screwdriver on the one side so it wouldn't rotate, and I got underneath the other side with a screwdriver like this, and I pried it up. All right, and now we just take this, and just pry it up, all the way up like that. I know it's a little tight, to, a little hard to see in there, but I'm just gonna get this clip up. Like I said, these are sometimes a little bit of a trick to get them to come off. Like now it's back into the groove. So what I did is I actually put a scribe in the groove and pulled it back out. Put it up. Just like that. And now we're going to release our steering wheel lock ring depressor. put this on the side for now. We're going to take our snap ring off. Don't lose it. And now we'll take this off. Now, if you're not sure, 
<coughs> if you're not sure how it's going to go back on. Now, there really is only one way it can go back on, but if you're not sure, again, mark it with your, your uh, marker, just like that. And then we'll take this lock plate off, like this. Right? There's all grooves inside here, so there really is only one way it can go back on. We're going to take this piece here off at the same time, just like that. And we know it goes in here like that. So if you're not sure how it goes back together, just stick it together like that. Be careful because there's grease on there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to take out these screws in here to remove the uh, to remove the turn signal switch itself. There's a couple of Phillips head and there's a couple of Torx inside here. So let me get the uh, the Torx and uh, we're going to continue. And we're going to change our gloves. Okay, so now the next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take out the three screws that actually hold the, uh, the, uh, the shifter lever and everything in. These are Phillips head. So we're just going to unscrew these and take them out. Don't lose them because you are going to need to put these back in there as well. side just a little bit like that just so we can gain access to the screw right down in here that's a Torx bit down inside there just so you know so we're going to take out the three Torx now down inside the steering column. Okay, and now our turn signal switch is loose. Before we go any further, we're just going to stop right here, and we're going to go down underneath the bottom. Let me bring you in there, I'll show you where I mean. Okay. What we're going to do is, you see underneath here, this piece right here. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a 5 16th or an 8 millimeter screw right there. We're going to unscrew that screw and we're going to remove the, uh, the plug. And that, by doing that, it's going to do two things. One, it's going to loosen it up so we can actually get it to pull out. And two, it's going to cut out all of the power going up into the steering column by unplugging everything. So we're just going to unscrew that screw. will not come out because it's actually uh, meant to stay in there and then you just take this once it's unscrewed all the way and you pull it out uh, once it's unscrewed all the way anyway and then this just comes out just like that and now we're going to bring this over here now, the one we're going to need to remove, we're going to get a pair of cutting pliers. We're going to snip this off right here. So, let me get the cutting pliers and we'll come right back. So, this piece here, we don't need this any longer. All right, so then that's disconnected. Now, the one, we're going to take this piece out here as well. This just pulls right out like that. And now, the one we're going to need to remove... It's going to be the thicker one. 
right here. So let's just take that. We're gonna pull this out right here. The way we're gonna do that, I'm gonna have a hard time showing you and doing okay. it. So what we do is you come in here with a screwdriver like this, come in here, and right in the center, right there, there's a little clip that holds it. You get in here and you turn the screwdriver a little bit to push that clip off, and then we push that down just like this, and it comes right out just like that. Now, this is the one that we're going to be removing from the car. Sometimes it's a little bit tough to get this thing through the steering column, so make it as straight as possible, just like that, so that way it pulls up and out. And that's why we have that long screwdriver there to assist us. All right, so let's go back up top now. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to come in over here. We're going to take this. Oh, you know what? We're going to take off that piece right there first for the... Uh, for the uh, emergency flashers, and we're going to get in here with the screwdriver, and we're going to pop that right off. So let's do that, and then we're going to pull this assembly out. Alright, so we're going to get in here with a little tiny screwdriver like this, and you just take it, and you push that piece right out, just like that, and we're just going to put it up here for now. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get in here, we're going to, now we have all the power removed from this unit here, so we can get in here with a scribe without doing any damage. All right, so now I'll show you how it goes. This wiring harness here, we need to pull that up and out from underneath here. So it is a little bit tricky to get it out, but we're gonna play with it so that we can, so that we can do that. I'm gonna play with it with my hand down here and then up on top as well, right here. a new one and we're going to reconnect it up. Now, before we replace it, it happens frequently, just match it up to make sure that everything is okay, that all the colors are correct, and that all the wiring, sometimes the colors will be different, but the wires are all in the correct location, which they are. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to lay this the way it's going to go, back inside the column, like this. Now that is how it's going to go, so we want to have this wire straight. Now the way we're going to do it in, put it down here like this, and we'll just push it down, and that's where that screwdriver comes in handy, to help us push it back down, just like that. Pull it out the bottom, and now we're going to take our switch and lay it back in the way that we took it out, just like that. Pull your wires from the bottom again, and then we'll line everything up. Just like that. And now we're going to put our three screws back in. Remember, we took out three Torx bits or three Torx screws. So we're going to put those three back in first. We're just going to catch them loosely for now. I know I say this all the time, but don't drop them. have to turn the directional like that in order to get it to line up correctly. I'm going to snug them down, not tight yet. Now we can tighten all three of them down. I'm 
Okay. Now we're going to re reattach. switch like this okay and we know those were Phillips heads remember the bigger Phillips head was up top here right we're just going to catch it loosely. And we're going to reconnect the other one back in place here as well. And now we can tighten these up as well. You're not going to over tighten them because you're just screwing into plastic. Okay, next thing we'll do is we're going to put our piece back on for the uh, emergency flashers. It just snaps right in and that's it. Now before we go any further here, we're going to go back down the bottom and we're going to reconnect it down the bottom. Okay. Because just before we put everything back together, we want to confirm that the job is done correctly. So we're going to reattach this. This I am going to need two hands with because I am going to have to get this piece back inside there. So let me do that. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. But I'll try to get you along there. All right. Just like this. And it snaps in. And now we'll reattach. to be able to see this, but we're going to try, and now we'll screw that screw back in, just like that, all right, so that's in all the way, I'm going to take this piece here, we're just going to put that back in there where it belongs, up here I'm talking about. We're just going to push that back in where it belongs, like that. That just protects the wires from rubbing up against the steering column. And now if we did our job correctly, we should have brake lights. So let's just set this up. I'll show you in a second. All right, we have our brake applied. And there, as you can see, let's get you closer so you can see. We have brake lights, and now we're going to jiggle the directional. I'm just going to show you this real quick. This is what I'm doing. Remember, we had this before we jiggled it, and the lights went off and on. So we're just going to keep on jiggling like that. And as you can see, it's on, staying on. So uh, now that we know that everything is working correctly, we can, uh, we can put it back together and we'll be in good shape. Okay, so now that we have the uh, steering um, turn signal switch in, we have our lock piece on up here. We're going to reinstall these pieces here. Now remember, this goes on here only one way it can go. Just like that, we're going to take our lock ring, put it over the top, and we're just going to push it down just a little bit. Now you, you, you can see that we can't get it down any further. So now we'll put it on here like this, and I'm going to screw it down as far as we can. I'm going to get a little bit 
snug, just like that. All right. Now we'll just screw this down. Now what this tool does is it pushes down. I'll explain to you one second. What it does is it pulls up on the steering shaft and it pushes down on the lock plate. All right, and now we're going to push that lock ring back into that groove down there. But I am going to need two hands to do it. And you'll hear it snap in when it's down. Tighten it down a little bit more. Okay. Let me just try and make sure it's down all the way. Just gonna make sure it's locked in. So now our lock ring is in place. Let me just make sure one more time. I want to make sure it's in here. All right, now we'll release our tool. And that's it. I'll bring you in there, I'll show you. See? That's where the lock ring goes back on, just like that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, remember we had this piece here. We have to put that on like that, over the top of that lock ring. This piece here, we're going to put it back on. Remember to line up your dots up here. We're going to pull down just slightly underneath here. Pull it down, make sure it goes over where it belongs, just like that. And then we're going to take our snap ring and put it on like this. Grab our snap ring pliers. Now you can use these snap ring pliers, or you can even just push it on by hand, whatever works for you. Sometimes by hand is easier than the snap ring pliers. We'll see how it goes like that. And now we're going to push it down until it snaps back in place where it goes. It's very important that it snaps in place because you want to make sure it's locked in there. And you hear a snap. And now our snap ring should spin in the groove, which it does. Now it's just me, but this snap ring was down over on this side here, so that's the way I'm going to put it back on. So now everything up underneath here is reconnected. Next thing we're going to do now, we're going to put our steering wheel back on. And remember, we have that little notch right there that lines up with that notch over here. So we're going to take this through here like this, going to put it over the top. And then we'll line it up. Okay. I'm gonna screw our nut back on. Now there probably is torque specs on this, but I just usually snug it down pretty snug. But I'm sure there is torque specs for it. And tight. Now the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to bring this back up here. We're going to put this back in where it was supported in there. We're going to take this piece here. It's a little tiny like a keyway it has to fit into down there. And 
and you, once you feel it, you just push it in and rotate it, and it, it locks in. And the last thing we're going to do is let's put our steering wheel back on. Okay, now once you have everything tight, then you're going to reconnect your airbag. You're going to take your plug and put it right back in where you previously removed it from. Now remember, we still have it disconnected down the bottom. Like that. Put our lock clip back in as well. Then we take our airbag. I get back in here like this. Then we just take the uh, Torx bit. And you're going to catch both of them by just a couple of threads before you do anything. And now once you have both of them caught, then you can tighten the airbag down. Nice and tight. Whoops. Okay, so that's it. Airbag is now tight. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do now, we have everything else back together. We're going to reconnect our airbag. Tough to do one-handed, but that's how it goes. You snap it in place, like that. We're going to put our lock clip back in as well, like that. We're going to reattach this where it was, up underneath here, like that. And now we're going to put our covers and everything back on the bottom here. I'm not going to show you that, but I'm going to put all these covers back on. And the main thing is, now, we can go in the back there and you can see the reflection. Now we have brake lights every time. And that's it. All right. Now, before we do anything, we're going to start it up and make sure that our airbag light is off. That's it, airbag lights off. That's it, everything else is done. Directionals work. Okay, so that's it. We're all set. We'll put everything back together on the bottom there, and then we're out the door. Okay, so as you can see, that, that wiring diagram does come in very handy because that way it brings us into a certain direction where we know where the problem is. We knew the switch wasn't the problem because we had power in and power out. Of course, when you stepped on the brake, and it, it could only go up into those modules or over into that switch. So uh, luckily it turned out to be the switch and not a, uh, a wiring problem with a busted wire someplace. But that's it. All right, so we'll get this car wrapped up, out the door, and on to the next one. All right, as always, thanks for watching. See you on the next one.